Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's post-game press conference, starting off with head coach Vicki Johnson. If you have any questions for Coach Johnson, please use the raise your hand feature, and we will go in the order that the questions are received. First, we're going to go to Champagne. Champagne, go ahead and ask your question. Coach, prior to the game, you talked about earning the Lynx respect. Despite the loss tonight, do you feel like that was accomplished? I think to a certain degree, we have to learn how to close games. You know, teams understand that we don't finish the game well um, in order to earn complete, honest respect. We have to learn how to finish games. We should have won this game tonight. Thank you. Next, we are going to go to Haley McGoldrick. Haley, go ahead and ask your question. Hi, Coach. Obviously, like you said, you wanted and needed to win that game tonight, but your bench really showed up in this game today. And what did you see from them that you really liked in this game, despite the result? They were very aggressive. Uh, we, we scored 40, 41 to 15 from their bench. Um, uh, Isabella, they all played well. Um, coming off the bench, Ty, I, I was very happy to see her find herself tonight. She got banged up a couple of times. Mabry coming off the bench. They are just aggressive on both sides of the bat. It's going to be very hard for us to beat anyone with our starters being our score, 70 to 38. You know, and, and we, we can't win like that. It's, it's impossible for us to win like that. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. Next, we are going to go to Drew Ivory. Drew, go ahead and ask your question. Coach, what went into the decision to change the lineup and rotation compared to the last game where you guys were able to pull out the win? Versus uh, Minnesota? Yes, the last time you faced the Lynx. Who did we start? Uh, you didn't start You didn't start Charlie. I believe you started Alicia Gray. No, we started Charlie against uh, Sylvia Fouts. Um, Charlie hasn't started the last two games, uh, but um, we, 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 don't, we don't have anyone other than Bella. Charlie and Bella are the only two players that can actually defend, defend uh, Sylvia Fowl in a way where we can at least challenge and we can come down with a double team. Uh, Izzy can do a good job for a small period of time, but Sylvia is too physical for her. Um, but um, I changed the lineup from New York uh, back to Charlie because um, she's a physical um, post that can can contain a Sylvia to a certain degree. And then Bella came in behind her. Sylvia was 15 and 11 boards tonight uh, and one offensive board. So Sylvia wasn't a problem. Mac McBride and, and the rest of the people that came off the bench that were very aggressive and we allowed them to get to their sweet spots. Thank you, Coach. Do we have any other questions for Coach Johnson? All right, we're going to go back to Champagne. Champagne, go ahead and ask your question. Yes, Coach, do you feel like the two techs were like a turning point in the game for you all? For sure. I mean, we have to understand how to, we have to learn how to control our emotions. We can't allow anyone to dictate our future. Um, we just have to play basketball, you know, and, and, and do what we can control. And controlling the referee is not one of the things that we can control. We just have to play basketball. And then just, you know, pray and hope that everything falls in our favor. But we have to stop talking to the referees. Thank you. All right, great. Do we have any other questions for Coach Johnson? All right, well, thank you for joining us tonight, Coach Johnson. Hey, guys, if you can just hang in there, we will be right back with Satu Sabli, Isabel Harrison, and Alicia Gray. Thanks, y'all. Hello, everyone. Thanks for waiting with us. Next up, we are joined by Wings guard Alicia Gray. If you have any questions for Alicia, 
please use the raise your hand feature and we'll go in the order that the questions are received. First, we're going to go to Champale. Champale, go ahead and ask your question. Hey, so you all recently, you've played three games in the past six days. How important are the next few days of rest before you play against Las Vegas? You want to get your recovery, you want to go to treatment, prepare your body so you can last the whole season. So recovery is always important. Thank you. Next, we're going to go to Haley. Haley, go ahead and ask your question. So coach was talking about how you guys off the bench were aggressive and outscored. Um, what was it for you guys in your mentality when, you know, coming off the bench in a game like this, especially a closer game when you're coming up that, you know, you know, you kind of have to pick up some slack. Uh, anytime when you're on a second group, you, you get to sit in and get a feel for the game and you know what the vibe is of the game. And also in the second group, you don't want to have a drop off. I mean, when you get subbed in the game, you want to want to either up the tempo or keep the same same tempo that the, the first group set. So it's very important for the second group to just uh, just feel the vibe of the game and, and, and just play hard. For sure. And for you personally, this is your sixth game in a row scoring in double digits. What's it for you knowing that when you're out on the floor, you're kind of expected to be somebody who's going to be making those shots? Uh, for me, I mean, I just play my game. I just go up the floor of the game. I mean, I feel like I'm I'm a great player that's able to to make plays, whether it's on the offensive or defensive end. So for me, I mean, it's nothing really special that I'm doing. I'm just playing my game and just going to the floor of the game. Thank you. Do we have any other questions for Alicia? Back to Champale. Champale, go ahead and ask your question. Yes, Coach talked about you all being able to close out the games. What do you think it is this the tearing you off from being able to finish down the stretch? Oh, the big thing, you just got to stay locked in and stay locked in on the game and what's going on, just not make like little like key mistakes when the games is close you just got to make as minimal mistakes as possible the big thing just lock in and, and finish the game thank you thank you champelle do we have any other questions for our olympian all right well thank you very much for joining us tonight alicia hey guys we're going to be right back with isabel harrison so hang right here all right, we are now joined by Wings front court member Isabel Harrison. If you have any questions for Izzy, please use the raise your hand feature and we'll go in the order the questions are received. And first, we're going to go to Haley McGoldrick. Haley, go ahead and ask your question. Hi, Izzy. Um, I just asked the same thing to Alicia, but for you going into a game when you're coming off the bench and, you know, your bench is really strong in this game, coming up when you know that you're going to be going in to maybe pick up some slack, what's your mentality going in when you get your minutes? To just play aggressive and, you know, do what I've always done, just bring energy and aggressiveness and togetherness. That's like my biggest thing right now. And like, no matter what, just staying positive, you really, you know, um, we really work on that and we speak about it all the time. So when we're able to apply it on the court, we do a really good job. Thank you. Next, we're gonna go to Champale. Champale, go ahead and ask your question. Yes, what did you take away from this game to move forward before your last game? Um, and sorry if that was confusing. I mean like the last game before the Olympic break, which is coming up. Yeah, that was just something that we had in mind going into this game. And um, Minnesota's a, they're a good team. Um, they have people that can come off the bench and benefit for them. But I think the biggest thing for us is not letting them go on runs. And they're playing at home. I mean, we all know how the atmosphere is when you play against Minnesota at home. Um, I just think we gotta, we learn not to dig ourselves in the hole and learning to stay together um, through everything that we're going through right now so I think X's and O's yeah it's basketball but I think our main priority is just focusing on us and what we need to do to you know continue to match together Thanks. next we are going to go to Drew Ivory Drew go ahead and ask your question Izzy 
this team over the years has struggled to finish games. And Coach Johnson just said that, you know, you guys still need to learn how to finish games. What is, what's the key to learning how to finish games and how do you get over that hump? Uh, I don't like talking about the past teams because, you know, you never know what was going on in those situations. But I know for this year, I think the biggest thing that we have to focus on is just taking it one play at a time. Um, you see throughout the game, when we did little things, it started to go against us and it just built up. But when we did really good things for us, uh, we started to come back. You know, we had the lead at half, even though we were making mistakes, but we stayed together. So I think for this year, I mean, I'm not going to count us out. I'm always going to be optimistic because I believe in this team. Um, I believe in what we have. Uh, I think just going into the next game, our focus is, okay, we have a break coming up and Vegas had one against us at home, at their home. So we just got to go all out um, before this break begins. And I've seen you've been getting some extra work in with Zach and you've been, you've been playing really well over your past three games, 19 points and over 60% from the field going into tonight. What have you guys been working on and what, what is, what do you think has improved most about your game? Uh, well, that video I tweeted, that was from this past summer. Um, and I put that in with Zach because he was the one that really started just expanding my game as far as just learning to finesse around the, the, the rim. Um, but the other things that I do with Coach Kelly and Coach Hugh, uh, we just work on just taking my time when I get the ball on the block and just being aggressive towards the rim. I either get fouled or, you know, I get a bucket. So those are some things that I incorporated this year and not settling for the outside shot. And lastly, what do you what do you and this team want to accomplish, you know, aside from, you know, just getting a win, but as far as team improvement before the Olympic break? Mm, I think one thing that we want to accomplish is obviously this next game. We want to end on a high note for us. And also, we just have to learn how to protect home court, getting a win in UTA. I think it would be just perfect to go into the break, like I said. So that's our biggest thing right now. We're going to go home, travel. Uh, look at film, and again, I don't want to kind of blow the situation up. It happens. Um, so just looking forward to the next game and just being positive. Thank you. Thank you, Drew. Do we have any other questions for Izzy? All right, well, thank you very much for joining us tonight, Izzy. Hey, guys, we're going to be right back with Satu Sabli in just a second, if you guys can just stick right with us. Thanks. We are now joined by Wings for Satu Sabli. If you have any questions for Satu, please use the raise your hand feature and we'll go in the order the questions are received. First, we're going to go to Champale. Champale, go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, so seven of your 12 points were in the first quarter. What adjustments do you feel like the Lynx made to affect your game or what contributed to you slowing down offensively? Mm. I don't know. Uh, I think our flow was a little broken and I might have been less aggressive in the second quarter, but I felt like I was sharing the ball. So I don't always need to score to be effective. But other than that, I watch film. So I, I can't really get an answer to that right now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next, we're going to go to Haley. Haley, go ahead and ask your question. Hi, Satu. So Izzy talks a little bit about your guys' togetherness and how you work together as a team. Even in a decision like this when it's not the result you want, how do you as a leader on this team kind of keep, you know, each other accountable and also together and not on each other's backs in a game like this? Yeah, you know, we, we have so many games this season that we can't put ourselves down for this game. You know, we will learn from it. We will execute the next games and we need to be able to finish the game strong. And I think that a lot of times our togetherness, especially off the court, like we're we're all friends off the court as well. And we have a good, um, what like we have a good chemistry going on. And that needs to hold together when we're facing adversity. Because a lot of times I feel like we like just break and we, we all need to play together all the time for 40 minutes. And that just has to do with consistency. I'm really not worried about our talent level or our skills because that's all there. And, we should be able to win all these games, but it's it's about playing consistently for 40 minutes, and that's what we need to do. And 
put our closeness on the court the whole game. Mm -hmm. Next, we're going to go to Drew Ivory. Drew, go ahead and ask your question. Sato, you just briefly mentioned it, but what would you say is the formula to consistency? Mm, hard work. <laughs> you know, you can't, when we have a turnover, turnovers happen, but we can't just not run back. We need a rebound. We, I think we did an amazing job on fouls, but we need to do that over 40 minutes. We need to stop Kayla McBride. She can't score 25 on us. Um, that has all to do with consistency, just being determined to stop, get stops. And then our offense will flow as well. You know, we're, we're great in shape. We have amazing bench players and they, they really carry us all. And it's just really great to see. But when we have those, those overlapses of, I don't know, when we, when we don't do well, we need to get ourselves together, huddle, and remind us like, okay, they have their run, but it's our time now. So just holding each other accountable and playing hard and knowing when, when we're facing adversity. And you faced this a lot last year. You know, it's a difference between being in the bubble and then having home and away games this year. But there were a lot of close game situations where you guys got over the hump, but, you know, also faltered as well. What are some differences you see between last year's close game situations and this year's close game situations? What have you learned from those? I think that this year we've already proven that we we can execute in the end. You know, we won a couple tough games already this year that we would have lost last year and I think it's just a journey for our team you know we still have a lot of the season left and we we need a we need to enjoy those close games we need to thrive in those close games and see that this this is our moment we can't just fall and um, do the same things like last year last year we had a bad attitude we fell apart and I feel like this year we're closer together but we, we just need to do more. It's not enough, clearly, and we will. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Drew. Do we have any other questions for Satu? All right, well, thank you very much for joining us tonight, <laughs> y'all. Thanks for joining us tonight, Satu. We will be back, uh, not tomorrow, but on Friday, possibly with uh, normal media availability, as well as on Saturday. Before we have our last game before the Olympic break, remember, guys, it's at noon versus the Las Vegas Aces at College Park Center. Thanks, y'all.